Let's take a look at quantitative mapping using QGIS 3. Quantitative mapping is going to use numeric fields in an attribute table to change how the features are represented. One, um, I'm going to start with doing this for the point features. So the point features, the vehicle collisions, if I open the attribute table, have some numeric attributes. This is the number of people injured, number of. Um, that's the main one that I'm going to stick with in this case. So, um, for example, I might want the points to be different colors based on the number of people who are injured. So in the layer styling panel, and again, if you don't have that for some reason, come up here to view, panels, layer styling, and turn it on. This is the best way to do styles in QGIS 3. I'm going to go to where it's single symbol right now and change it to graduated. I want it to be graduated based on this number of field and I'll classify, and we'll see that white is 0 to 2 injuries, 2 to 2.4 to 4.8 is this shade of pink, and the deepest red is 9.6 to 12. So number of injuries being a point anything, in this case, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you might want to double click on the values and change those. And you see, in this case, when I change the maximum for one, it also changes the minimum for the next. So you might want to just get rid of these, the decimal points. And you might also need to update a legend based on that. can also use this trim feature. Okay, so that changed the colors based on the number of injuries field. It's not probably the best way to look at this data, considering uh, clearly most of the collisions have few injuries, so it makes it really hard to see the others. And you could come in here and change the individual symbols. So I could make these extra small and I could say, get rid of the stroke. Uh, I can make them smaller and smaller. Okay, that starts to be a little bit more legible. Um, but another way to do this um, is to change the size of the marker based on that value. So keep the column to number of injuries, but the method we can change to size. So it's going to change the size based on that value. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that the bigger, um, the bigger points have larger values here. And we can confirm this if we zoom in far enough, we can confirm this by using the Identify Features tool and selecting one of these, although it can be difficult to select just one. So we can come in here to this panel and look for a number of, you can see that's one, but there are multiple features here, lots of features. Let's go down to the bottom one. Okay, that's one number of is three. And you can see when we click on it, it gets a little bit bigger. Um, it's a lot to sift through in this case. <clears throat> but that's one way that you could confirm that uh, the style worked as expected.
Now, if we look through the options here, you can see that um, <clears throat> that you can play around with the size range. So I can make the size for the smallest uh, class even smaller. To make it to make them blend in a little bit more. Still, when I zoom out, they're visible. But if I wanted to highlight the places with a lot of injuries, I might consider doing something along those lines. Um, And there's still, there's nothing stopping me from coming in and editing each symbol. And maybe I, maybe I liked the red scheme that we had before. So from white to red. So I might want to come in here and edit each one and change the colors a bit. And you'll see that the symbols, um, you can see a darker red and a lighter red. Um, and both of them are showing the same thing. It's, it's both, they're both the number of injuries at those points for that particular collision. So that's quantitative mapping with points. I want to move on to quantitative mapping with polygons. So if I hide the points for a minute, I can, I have this file from a previous exercise where I counted the number of collisions by a uh, council district. So you can see the num points, that's the number of injuries per council district. And it's a similar process. I'm going to come to graduated, select that column, num points and hit classify. Now this is um, creating these categories for me based on the number of points within that polygon. So if, if there were 669 to 1173.8 points, they are this white color. And I can confirm that by turning that on and off and seeing the underlying data there. Um, so you can edit these one by one if you needed to. You can also change the mode. Um, natural breaks is often a reasonable way to go for data like this. Um, you can also look at the histogram. So if I load the values, you can see how frequent each count is. So um, if we look at 2000, oops, I didn't mean to click there. If we look at the 2000, 2000, um, 2000 points per polygon, you can see there's only one feature that matches that one. Uh, and there are two that are up in this range. And if I reduce the number of bins more, you can start to see um, it's putting these features into bins based on the number of points in each of them. And looking at it this way can give you an idea of what the texture is of this and gives you an idea of um, where it might make sense to put breaks, where it might make sense to categorize them. So for example, it might make sense here to categorize these together because they're higher. It might also make sense to put these together. And if you do that, you see that the map updates. And that's really going to be depending on um, <coughs> on the point you're trying to get across and your data. Um, but this is, this is one way that you can, um, that you can start to visualize that. 
and <clears throat> um, I think that's that's all I'm going to cover now for quantitative graduated styles in QGIS 3. Hope that helps.